This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming service, Nebula, for free when you sign up for CuriosityStream by going to curiositystream.com slash Thomas. It is 10.30 p.m. right now, but this actually isn't where I am. I'm actually right here, sitting at my desk. What am I doing? I don't know, I'm looking at YouTube statistics, I'm scrolling through Twitter, maybe I'm playing a video game. Whatever I'm doing, I'm not actually doing what I really wanna be doing right now, which is sleeping. See, I am the kind of person who likes to get up early in the morning. I like to get an early start in the day, but to do that and to get a good amount of sleep, which is crucial, I have to go to bed at a decent time the night before. And to be completely honest with you, over the past few months, I have sort of fallen out of that habit and I found it really difficult to get my butt into bed at a good time every single night. So I am making this video as a sort of wake up call to myself. I'm going to break down the problems that I see in my life, the things that are preventing me from going to bed when I really wanna to go to bed uh, that are affecting my self-discipline or I guess that my self-discipline has not yet been able to overcome. And I'm going to lay out a plan for solving those problems and actually getting back to a decent bedtime. But given that you clicked this video, knowing what the title was, I'm guessing you might have an issue going to bed at a good time as well. So hopefully this is as helpful to you as it is for me. That being said, I have narrowed it down to three specific problems. And also while I'm thinking about it, I actually have to get on a plane tomorrow uh, and go to Atlanta to speak. So, hey Martin, do you think you could help with the B-roll for this video? I, I don't like that, but I don't have time to deal with it. Anyway, so like I said, three specific problems. There's kind of four because I do find myself staying up playing guitar late some nights, but really what I find myself doing instead of going to bed most nights is either sitting on my computer doing stupid stuff like scrolling through YouTube analytics or watching a two hour retrospective on Bioshock Infinite and its game design choices. Cool video, but probably not something I should be clicking on at 11 p.m. Or scrolling through my phone while in bed or watching a movie way too late, like starting a movie way too late and then committing to finishing it even if it finishes at 12.30 p.m. These are all bad habits that I have found myself doing, but two of them have to do with respecting the 20 second rule. The 20 second rule is a concept from Sean Aker's book, The Happiness Advantage. And in that book, he talks about, you know, one of the most important driving factors in the formation of good habits and in your ability to break bad ones is how you set up your environment, specifically making Making sure that your environment is set up in such a way that doing the good habits is very easy and on the opposite side of that coin that you set things up so your bad habits are actually very inconvenient to do. So for one really good example, if you, like me, want to eat less ice cream, maybe you would keep your ice cream out of your freezer. Like there's an ice cream shop 15 minutes away on foot. I could walk to it if I wanted ice cream, but I'm never impulsively going to the ice cream shop 15 minutes away to get ice cream. It's only when there's ice cream in my freezer that I will take a break from working to eat ice cream instead of eating a healthy lunch. Again, the way you set up your environment is crucial in the formation of the habits that you really wanna build. And in the case of going to bed on time, I have not been respecting that 20 second rule because I often leave my computer on all day long, even once I'm done with work. And what that really results in is scenarios where I will come downstairs, it's 10 p.m. at night, and I'll convince myself that I'm just gonna check YouTube analytics for one second. But then, because the internet is built in such a way to provide constant little dopamine hits, I'll find myself going to another website, checking another set of stats, and eventually, you know, going down whatever rabbit hole it is that leads me to that two hour Bioshock or System Shock retrospective that I found myself watching. So, two, Respect the 20 second rule, I need to change my environment. And the way that I'm going to do that is number one, having a specific time at which I will shut my computer off for the day. If it is shut off, I'm not gonna go get on that computer convincing myself I'm just gonna check something. It would be too inconvenient. And for the phone, I'm gonna follow the exact same principle. I'm not gonna be putting the phone on the nightstand anymore. Instead, I'm going to keep it away from my nightstand, have it across the room. It's still going to be my alarm clock for now, but if it's across the room, if it's plugged in for the night, then I'm not gonna be tempted to grab it and check 
stats or social media or whatever it is. That just leaves us with the issue of staying up too late watching movies. Now I see this as a different self-discipline issue because it's not really a 20 second rule issue since sitting down and starting a movie seems to be a bit more of a significant thing. It's not something that you just do impulsively. For me, I think part of the problem here is that if you've been watching my channel, you probably know, I've taken a much greater interest in the cinematography and the production aspect of my content. And as a result, I'm a lot more interested to watch movies these days because I take a lot of inspiration from them, especially my favorite director in the world who is uh, Edgar Wright. So I will convince myself to watch movies even if it's too late in the evening to really start it and still be able to go to bed on time. So I think I need to take a more holistic approach to solving the problem from this angle. And like I've talked about in the past, when your self-discipline fails, the best thing you can do is to essentially put training wheels on the bike, to enlist the help of an external system to help you to get back in the correct pattern of habits that you want, and then slowly build your self-discipline up from there so it can sort of maintain those habits on its own. So recently I found out about an app called Sleep Town, which was created by the same people who made the Forest app. And I've talked about Forest before. It's basically an app where uh, you kind of grow virtual trees if you don't touch your phone for a certain amount of time, which means it actually kind of functions as a really nice Pomodoro app for getting work done. And Sleep Town is basically the exact same concept applied to sleep. Instead of growing a virtual forest, you are building a virtual town and you get to build a building every single night that you go to bed for a specific uh, going to bedtime and then wake up at a specific wake up time. So this is going to be my experiment for now. I'm gonna try using that. And then of course, like I've talked about in other videos, I also believe in tracking my progress over time. So I'm gonna be using the Martin system that I outlined in my recent habit tracking video to also be physically checking off every single night that I do go to bed on time. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to develop that habit once again and be able to start getting up early in the morning once again so my morning routine doesn't take so long. And that's gonna be important because I'm not always doing good work at night when I'm staying up too late. Like I said, I'm often like watching two hour video game retrospectives, which is definitely not productive. But if I get up early in the morning and get an early start to the day, I have a lot more time to put into pushing my content, which is really what I wanna be doing right now. And you've probably seen that in the last few videos on the YouTube channel. There's actually one other video where we did that and we're really, really proud of the work we did that you probably haven't seen unless you are a member of Nebula. Now, if you haven't heard of Nebula, Nebula is a completely independent self-funded streaming service that is created by uh, both myself and a lot of other creators that you probably recognize, such as uh, Devin from Legal Eagle, Sam from Whenever Productions, Brian from Real Engineering, lots of great educational creators. And we're essentially building this service so we have a way to pursue ideas that might not work on YouTube since the YouTube algorithm kind of favors staying in your lane for lack of a better term. Uh, and the video that I created recently was a deep dive into the secrets in the intro sequence of one of my favorite TV shows of all time, which is Gravity Falls. And if you've seen that show, you know there are lots of cool secrets in that intro sequence and actually throughout the entire show. We are incredibly proud of the work that we did on that episode. And I would love it if you checked it out over on the working title series, which is where it lives on Nebula. In addition to that, being on Nebula means you get ad free versions of my videos, which actually go up on Nebula before they go up on YouTube. So it's a great way to just support my content without having to watch ads. If you get on Nebula right now, you're going to see a behind the scenes video with myself and my editor, Tony, where we talk about how we made that skill you're slowly losing video, which was absolutely the most complex video we'd ever worked on up until that point. So you might be interested to see that. And the best part is that subscribing to Nebula and supporting us and getting ad-free videos also comes with Curiosity Stream. We have worked with Curiosity Stream to create a bundle so you can actually subscribe to Curiosity Stream, get access to thousands of high quality documentaries, including documentaries covering nature, history, technology, science. There are documentaries from David Attenborough. There's one on the science of sleep, actually, which would be a great follow-up to this video. So you get access to all of that, plus access to Nebula for just $3 a month or 20 bucks a year if you want to pay for your upfront. But the best part is if you go over to curiositystream.com slash Thomas, you can get access for 31 days completely free. So you can try it before you even put any money up. But again, it's three bucks a month. It's a fantastic deal. And that $3 a month gets you ad-free videos. You get to support creators and uh, well, just thank you if you choose 
to do it. Thanks for watching this video as well. Hopefully you found it helpful. Again, I'm kind of laying these things out for myself and I have to make this video quickly because I'm going off to a conference that I have to speak at, but I think this is an issue that is not mine alone. I think a lot of people deal with this issue, especially with all the social media apps that we have such instant access to these days. So if you did enjoy this, uh, definitely provide a like if you feel like it was worth it. That definitely um, helps the YouTube algorithm to you know, think my channel is worth promoting to other people, which makes me feel good. So thank you if you do that. Thanks for your support as always. If you wanna watch some other videos, I've got some more on screen right here. You can also get subscribed if you want notifications, maybe of new videos. You can hit the bell if you want uh, a little bit more of a guarantee of notifications, but uh, no pressure if you don't want to. And I will see you in my next video. Go do what you want. I'm not your dad and uh, I'm out of here. Special effects.